Hello. And welcome. And welcome. And welcome. Ooh, there I go, hearing myself again. Yikes. Ooh. Ooh. Let's put a stop to that. All right. Um, well, that's my indication that the sound works. And somebody brought up on Discord about yet another guard diversity beautiful cities of Morrowind Patch, which I do have set up locally. <sighs> Thank you so much. <sighs> Sound check. Confirmation came in from not me. Thank you, Small Yo. Yet another guard diversity, beautiful, beautiful cities of Morrowind Patch that uh, is not on the website. In addition to a Telvani cephalopod patch that I don't even have locally. Definitely not on the website, and I don't even have it in my personal setup. That said, I didn't notice anything completely off, so I wonder, you know, um, I'm not going to go as far as to dump it. I'll trust in the wisdom of Random Pal, and we're going to go ahead and add this one, too. Um, so, yeah. Good day. So let's get into that. And then first things first, I'm going to go ahead and do this on my uh, in my local setup here. Got, uh, looks like we want. Hmm. We have waterworks. I have that. Core of one. Okay. Yeah, I just straight up just don't have that. Well. Gonna skip on that for now the website but I'm plugging that in right here for sure so let's uh, let's see what's actually in there oh okay so it replaces some of the some of the base things not bad not bad okay yeah this will get into the website probably in the next point release um, I don't know if it's something that an existing save could change to though so maybe it would have to be like a 4.0 because it's like changing you know the base patch so let's see what this is oh yeah look at that okay Very interesting. Okay. Oh my. Oh, excuse me. I got a ton of yard work to do today. Did some already earlier. That was from a battle with some weeds. And wild rhubarb. All over. Just all over. Hmm. Okay, so... Walu Council Hall Plaza. 
So this would seem to replace this guy. Okay. Excuse me. Going off the deep end here, why not? Why not, I say? Optional merchants? Absolutely. Cluttered canal? Yes. Give me all of that. Okay. Now let's for real see what's in here. Okay. this just something I don't know about is always one thing I wonder when I'm looking at beautiful cities Balmora Waterworks okay yeah oh man <sighs> this looks pretty awesome but basically everything I was just doing I can go ahead and stop doing because we're not adding this one just yet. Mm. Very nice. Wow, okay, well. That having been said. Let's shelve it. Uh, excellent, this looks really excellent. Excuse me. All right. Now that I'm done going off the deep end. Not doing any of that. And back to the topic at hand, which is cephalopod patch. Now I'm done going off the deep end. Nine. Yeah, what what initially threw me off the deep end, right there. All right. <laughs> you need some coffee. It's a coffee pot on the desk kind of a day. And my better half needed some too. All right. 
just gives us a plugin fixed. Uh, no, wait, that's not what I want. Is it? Let's pull up Discord again here. Tovani cephalopod armor. down a little bit here. There you go, 28. Hmm. that up. I would think. So let's do that. Two. Let's move all this stuff, including some stuff that I don't think I have on the website, just playing around with. Not 100% sure it's good, frankly. I think, and I think this probably goes here. which I seem to be okay at doing with these. We'll check with the M locks later. Okay. Let's put that on the website, eh? Shall we? Um, well, first things first. Let's make sure we're good to go. Locally replaced. Might go potato mode here. Bear with me.
merging is just kind of a sanity check. You know, kind of the last sanity check before you actually go in and look at things um, in my workflow. <clears throat> there could be other things to do too, though. I know Abbott has a, probably a few awesome TES3 command scripts. I won't talk too much while it's crunching. Oh, here we go. Yeah, nice. So many lines. That my editor, oh, it's not actually that many, come on. Regardless, it made Emacs upset, probably because it was updating. Just a quick overview here. Not too unfamiliar output for me, at least at this point. Okay. That's enough of that, I tell you. Let's actually just, let's go in the game. I guess what I'm looking for here is, uh, ooh, oh me, oh my. Got some awesome help yesterday with my audio from the user settiness. Props, thank you. But my speaker was up really loud from that. If I didn't have coffee, that would have startled me quite a bit. What I'm looking for here is, ooh. Sadrith Mora makes my laptop melt. I just want to come to a place, though, that has the cephalopod wearing people, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, potato framework frame rate aside I think it's okay makes me wonder though Am I missing something here? No, okay. This, friends, is a preview of what's to come, by the way. If you thought beautiful cities of Morrowind patches were numerous, there's 154 patches here for various things. Not everything inclusive, but an impressive collection and props to the uh, to the author. So far, I'm loving everything I've seen here. Um, and then do too close of an examination using the validator or otherwise to see ultimately what I'm going with here, but um, very nice stuff. Just wow. Um, so, okay, I mean, for my purposes, that looked pretty good. Um, I went to a Telvanni city... I saw the cephalopod armor, guards, you know, and, and nothing was, was really wrong. I'm confident enough that nothing is seriously broken. Um, so I'm going to put these both on the website, actually. Mm. 
patches, patches.py. Okay, so for now, I can't actually put the patch here if I want to use my custom folder that I added a couple streams back um, because it's not flexible enough to handle two folders deep. It'll only give me one folder deep. So it won't let me change, for example, the category folder. I can't have it be, you know, um, in here, but living, in, you know, data path-wise in the beautiful cities of Morrowind folder, which is where it would logically be when you extract it, you know, from the mod itself. So, so for now, we're going to have to slowly put a few more patches into the cities and towns folder. Um, well, since I'm complaining about it now, I think I'm going to go ahead and just look at what would it take to translate that because I already do that somewhere. I know I do. I just don't really remember where. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Uh, I just, <laughs> well, it looks like I have an explicit, you know, usage of separators. So I suppose what could happen is I can have a method that takes the clean name. Or no, I don't need to do that. I can just... Why not do it in the clean name method itself? And it would be a condition on custom folder. And we'll say, This is apparently no good. Huh? This is a little confusing. Hang on. My friend, IPython. Whenever I don't understand something, it's always there for me. So let's say um, we have some path. Ubarbaz. That's some path. It's not using the proper path lib that Python now prefers. Kyostan, hey, good morning. It's like past noon for you. Come over and pull weeds in my garden. <laughs> uh, well, at least it's a holiday weekend, I guess. And, and hopefully you don't work tomorrow. Yeah, see, IPython has no beef with it. Okay, well, it's not... Okay, fair. I'm not... This is an apple to oranges example here. 3 a.m.? I'm Well, you know... <laughs> Whatever, man. You're just making excuses. Yeah, I mean, it looks legit to me. Your car is fast. Pfft, please. Okay, so do I do this somewhere else? Do I compare it? Or is there maybe an attribute of char field? Yeah, no, it's a string. Um, okay. 
Oh, okay, it's a jalopy. That's what I figured. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not... So I'm going to have to make some convention here that I'm only using forward slashes. What the hell is that? Okay, emoji things, if you're watching this after the fact in the chat. So I'm curious now. Is there some idiomatic way to do this that I'm violating? Django docs are awesome. Ever since I started using Django, I could always come. When I learned enough to be able to read docs and understand what the hell I'm looking at, always been super, super useful. A string field. I don't know why, you know, language server is angry about that. Ooh, we don't need that, but that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I guess my next question is, do the tests hate it? By the way, Sten, thank you for joining me today. I hope you're going to have a great day. I even had a late stop yesterday. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Not really. I actually don't care. <laughs> this will be good though. What I'm adding now will be will be good because it will allow me to do things a bit more logically. I can have a patch in the patch category, but display it to the user as they will actually have it in their folder without having to do anything s silly, you know. <clears throat> We're halfway there with the existence of the custom folder field. It just needs to be a little flexible to uh, swap folder paths, you know, when somebody on Windows is looking at it. Tests are crunching now. And this bugs me, but also, like this, it's mad about this too. Charfield is not iterable. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. Let's test this theory exactly right now. This is Tombs and Towers. Congratulations, you're the next contestant. No, but seriously, name is a Charfield. Okay, this claims Charfield not iterable. I call bullshit. Looks pretty iterable to me. And, uh, you know, just, just to be clear, we are talking about the same exact data here. So, I don't know what's going on here. I'm a little disappointed. I don't know if this is pyrite. I'm going to have to look into it. It's a little disappointing. But as you can see here, everything is A-OK. -okay. 
the char field definitely is iterable. That's what this is right here. <sighs> Frustrating. You know, your tool should help you, not make you annoyed. So it's obvious that I need to revisit my Python setup here. It's a little embarrassing. What can you do? Uh, okay. Well, really we only need to care about Windows and Windows and then we would in this case so long since I did that. Do I have my shell open? Let's just do it here. The best search engine is the stuff you have right here. Uh, And this is why I love IPython. You put that period there, you hit tab. That's what you got to work with. You know, my face is cutting off up here a little bit, but there's everything there. It's basically as good as reading the docs. I mean, if I want to know more about replace, obviously I have to you know, check the doc string. But for now, I, just to confirm its existence, this is good. Just a little bit of introspection to sanity check myself because my tools are fighting me. Let's test this. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to move the patch that I previously put in with the cities in with the patches. That would be the Glass Glow Set Graphic Herbalism patch. And I'm going to add these other ones under the new pattern here. Yeah. guy and uh, plunk it in with the patches where it should logically be. And we're going to take the special feature I just wrote and put it to the test. And it's going to be a uh, game play. So this is one obvious weak point here is I'm hard coding the parent, I guess you could call it, category. Not that this would really ever change. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that it absolutely is gameplay is the right category, but, you know, we don't change that very often. I think it's okay for now. Slap a date on there. <clears throat> 11.35. Pretty.
pretty consistently been hacking on the weekend here. I'm thinking about maybe moving the time a little bit later, actually. Because in the summer, I can get more yard work done earlier before the sun gets up. Like right now, I kind of wish I was out there mowing, um, pulling weeds and stuff. So I don't know, maybe do it just before dinner time here locally. I don't know. Anybody else in here? No. Maybe when other people are here, I'll ask. I don't care about your opinion, Sten. Well, there's only one thing to do now. Let's check our work. I goofed. Did I? Oh, no. Yeah, I just didn't save this file yet. <sighs> Tell me it's one of those days. And again, so the intention is we want we want to check that the Windows path looks like a Windows path when I when I do um, tomfoolery. Okay, and we can see it did not. It did not do what I wanted it to do. So let's find out why. crunch. This should just work. Object is not callable. This. I 
don't think this is going to work the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Yeah, no good. Hmm. see any reason why this shouldn't work and be way simpler. <clears throat> well, it doesn't. I'm just a dingus. Ta da! Category patches. include the category This is it. There we go. That's what I wanted. It's not too hideous, I don't think. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think it's too hideous. And it lets me be flexible enough where I need to be. Okay. So. We need to do a couple things here. It is on here, okay. So first things first, gonna move, move all that.
actually. I don't need to. I don't think I need to move these. Just these. Selective chunk on staging crapped itself. Yeah, it worked that time. Hey, Gonzo. Good day to you. I hope you're doing well. Thanks for hopping on. It's good to see you here. Just doing some uh, some catch up with some of the stuff uh, Distance Zero has pointed out on the Discord server about uh, BCOM patches, cephalopod patches and stuff. Didn't even have this um, Telvani cephalopod armor patch loaded up locally. Um, so yeah, just kind of doing that right now massively overslept hey man me too it's kind of weird <laughs> it's a, as i said earlier it's a coffee pot on the desk kind of a day for me so yeah i'm with you but yeah uh some interesting nuggets uh on discord from not only from distance zero user but also from elliot daly i'm sorry if i mispronounced that about um project atlas git repo on github which I probably knew existed, but I haven't looked at it in a long time. And it's way more up to date than the Nexus listing. It even has a improved lights for all shaders patch that I fired up in my total overhaul locally and at a five minute look looked great. No discernible visual difference. So yeah, I mean, it's, I think in the future we're gonna have to look at not only the the Git repo for Project Atlas, which seems to be a bit more up to date, but also it includes a Python script for generating atlases, which is really exciting because the batch scripts were, you know, maybe you can run them on Mac or Linux. Um, it seems like a bad time to me, honestly, and I assume they're all written for just Windows. So yeah, anyway, this is something, this and the related Python script for generating atlases is like something we definitely need to, you know, look at someday. I don't know if I'm awake enough today, approaching noon. <laughs> but yeah, oh, here we go. So back to it. We're adding this patch. I also just added a feature that lets me. Um, you can see here. I've got. I've got. Uh, we added this a couple weeks back, and I put it under the gameplay category because it needed to be that way because of how I wrote this feature for the custom folder. But just now, before you hopped on, um, I added a little bit of Python magic that would say, "Okay, you're in the patches category," but I see. Something that looks like a category here. And it'll go ahead and render it in the patches category with the folder path of gameplay. Because that's how it will naturally be extracted, you know, when you're installing it. Um, which So this is like the part two to the feature I wrote a few weeks ago. Really uh, allows me to properly categorize things. And so I went back and moved this. Um, you know, if we're doing it right, we should say there's a change log entry for that. 
Let's do that before I forget or get too far into something else and don't want to do it. And this one is these two. Yeah, nice indeed. It's something that was definitely like brought up to me and something I noticed and wanted to do for a while, but just, you know, in my copious free time that I have, I just never got around to doing it until now. And it turned out to be like a five minute affair, which is always, you know, really great. I'm not going to claim it's the best approach or the best Python, but I'm going to claim that it's not totally garbage. Now, cat is a patch under patches. Maybe a little long-winded, I don't know. So let's go ahead, first things first. So this would be the entirety of that code. I just say if there's a slash, which unfortunately depends on me saying right here, you know, if I do this, it's going to completely break everything, so always got to put it as a forward slash. But if there's a slash in there, do the thing, you know, where we where we give our path. Otherwise, just do what you always did before. Um, and this is this is incorrect because I don't do the. Oh. I don't do the test here. So this is another smelly thing about this code is I have to do this test twice um, because I might get multiple folder paths or there might be one. So potentially another smell in my design. So, okay, yeah, if, if for either flavor of path we might get, if there is a slash indicating a altered category and path, then, you know, do the thing. Otherwise, do the thing that you've always done. It would be really good to find, because the example I tested <clears throat> hmm, is just one. What if we... Just for testing purposes. I want to see what it looks like with two. And also with just one. Actually, okay, I see what's... Mm. I confused myself. What I need to do. Yeah. What I need to do is that. Just trying to see for something... It's probably an unlikely scenario. A weirdly categorized thing would almost certainly have a subfolder path. I think in every case it probably will, but let's just make sure it works otherwise. <clears throat> I 
I suppose I should mention while this is crunching, last night, uh, I just felt like playing around with the construction kit and I came up with the total overhaul patches set. Which right now is just two things. Um, one for this problem that you, that I didn't notice until I was making the NWAS guide. I made Johnny Hostile stand right here. And there's like the wheel like sticking into the wall awkwardly. Um, so I fixed that. And then I'm planning on adding, uh, what's it called? Red, uh, Redania Restored by Rizeron. It just will, it seems like it will fit nicely into an existing setup. But then I noticed while I was looking at it that the mushroom tree replacer, like originally the top of the mushroom was like down here and it was awkward. Like this ladder was just going to nowhere and it bugged me a lot, obviously. So I went into the CS, raised the mushroom up a little bit and uh, and we might add, we might very well add this today, uh, time permitting, but yeah. Um, and the neat thing about doing this too is, and my and I just want to kind of show off my workflow is I've got the Delta plugin workflow here where I'm dumping the mod to text and right here in 50 lines of YAML, you can see the entirety of the changes, everything, the content of the mod is right here, bare in front of you. What it needs, this cell we're working in, we move this cartwheel thingy, you know, that's the position, I mean, um, and you can turn this into a plugin and load it into the CS, but I just l personally love having this like text representation of the changes you know if we look at the um redania restored patch here there's two things happening here i delete some sack that i couldn't see in the cs to move so i just deleted it um i would definitely accept a patch that moves it rather than deleting it if you can figure it out and then yeah raisin just jacking up the, the emperor parasol that's you know that's how we got this and this is the textual representation of this and i just me personally you know i i love it um if I had to move the position of the mushroom, I probably wouldn't just edit this text. I probably would compile it to OMW add-on, load it into the game, and move it so I can see it because um, I'm not a machine. But yeah, I just, I, uh, this part of my workflow I think is unique, but also it, give, it gives you a sense. If you want to know what's in the plugin, you know, you can just simply come here and look at the YAML and get a pretty good idea. Oh, you know, probably this isn't going to mean much to you, but beyond the obvious implication of it, I moved the position. And that's indeed what I did. So anyway, yeah. Bury the lead on that one a little bit. <clears throat> oh my. That's so good. That's really no good. So I'm glad I tested that. But I, again, this just feels like a impossible scenario. Let's fix it nonetheless. Will not require crunching. Okay. So the code path we're taking is unclear. We'll give myself a little hint here. You can see the engine updated itself there, the Django engine. All right. We're pretty obviously not going here because I don't see FUBAR printed right there. But if you're not convinced. Oh, oh, geez, Louise, I see it right here. There, I'm literally giving it. Oof, wow. It's because I had a trailing comma there, almost certainly. Wow, I bet it's fixed now. Yep, boom. I'm having a moment where I'm reflecting on an earlier comment of my tools annoying me. And right now, my Python workflow is kind of annoying me a little bit. And just to give you some context, if you don't know what happened is, I use a tool for auto-formatting my Python code, so I don't need to think about how many indents or what, you know, do I break this up on one line or anything, you know. The idea is to have it consistent, and every time something else thinks about the way it should look. And what I did was, I put a comma there, and then I save the file. And with that comma there, the formatter says, oh, obviously you wanted a tuple. 
because you had a trailing comma. And you can see now we have a parentheses inserted at the beginning and the end there. No, that's not what I wanted. Not at all. But I didn't notice I made that mistake when I made it. So there you have it. I'm convinced that it works well enough. Gameplay, patches, looks good. For a potentially impossible scenario, but hey, we were thoughtful and tried to make sure we covered all of our bases. So going back to here, let's commit the change. No need for that anymore. All right. I didn't expect to implement that today. It feels kind of good to do that because I was dreading having like a bunch of stuff crammed in the wrong category that I would have to go back later and fix. That's like the worst kind of work is that kind of technical debt, you know, so. Yay, I didn't have to do it. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Now, going back to what I wanted to do maybe 45 minutes ago. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Which buffer? This one. So what are we doing? We are ignoring this for now. We are moving Telvani cephalopod armor load order to a more logical place that in hindsight, this is where it ought to have gone to begin with. This will fail unless another change is made that you basically have to be me to know about. Although, if you're not me and you're working on the code, you will know about it when the tests yell at you for having a bad load order and it's going to give you some incomprehensible error that probably only me knows how to deal with. Or certainly only me is not going to run away screaming, which I think is an acceptable approach. <sighs> Okay. Oh, Alexia, you're going right there, friend. Yeah. Tilvani Cephalopod. <clears throat> huh, I feel like it should be a graphics overhaul. That's kind of an oversight. Okay, so we are adding yet another patch for the beautiful mod, beautiful cities of Morrowind. Random Pal is like a heroic modder. I just, my mind cannot fathom the amount of work that is put into everything, all the patches and everything. You know, I have like... I got this little thing with two very tiny patches, and I think I'm pretty cool. It's nothing compared to the scope of work in Beautiful Cities of Morrowind. And it just, every time I have to interact with the mod, I have to take a moment and just be in awe at the scope of work and just, yeah, let's take a moment right now and continue to be a little in awe and just thank Todd for our community. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'm having a... I just had a little rant there and now forgot what I was going to add. 
28. After the original ESP. Thank Todd for better or for worse. Gonzo says, yeah. They're brilliant. Is he age or a day Joe? Yeah, he's a little column A, little column B. Um, you know, the game and indeed software development industry in general is a interesting beast. And when you consider the context in which Morrowind was made, Small team, low budget, Bethesda on the verge of bankruptcy. It's really a miracle that the game wasn't more of a, you know, dumpster fire, honestly. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see. There's supposed to be some kind of a patch here. Armor, Tovani, Cephalopod, Armor. Not sure why I decided not to use this. Yeah, not a clue. Gonna add it. Might have just been an executive decision I made while trying to get BCOM integrated into the lists, you know. I made a couple of mistakes. And this is probably one of them. Uh, here we go. Okay. And uh, I don't I'm not quite using the RR one, but I guess that's a that's a to-do item. Oh, and I suppose Gonzo, since you're here, I fleshed out the list a little bit for today, but there's notably a lot of stuff for the future here including some really neat looking stuff. Went down the rabbit hole of Nordic Dagon Fell. I actually have it locally, but ended up coming across quite a few other things that look really neat. Um, I think 3.4, I'm going to try to get a lot of these things integrated. And um, it'll be a good, it'll be a good update. Yeah, it's going to be, it will be a good one that I think will reasonably fit on top of an existing setup. I, I'm really trying not to, like introduce a change that somebody couldn't adopt on an existing setup but like there's stuff coming that are gonna warrant honestly um like a, a major point release update you know 6.0 um for example there's the uh let's see here there's this one economy mod by the <clears throat> excuse me by the author of alchemical hustle no, no, I'm sorry. It's not. No, and this isn't the mod I was... Excuse me. It is by the author of Alchemical Hustle. I'm just derping on what it's called. Um, but that's going to be one that I really doubt will go into an existing playthrough, you know, successfully. Because it's it's making some deep changes into the economy. And, and those kinds of things. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. I have some old saves we can try it with. It's going to bug me if I don't balance everything. Here we go. For the right price. Just added Django's dialogue and quest voice greetings. Oh, interesting. Hmm. 
Those are certainly worth a look. Definitely should be put into the backlog. Thanks for the note there. And yeah, this is the one. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this is, oh yeah, I've been playing Morrowind for an hour. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, I've been playing for an hour. I'm filthy freaking rich. I walked into the, I knew to walk into the right cave or accidentally stumbled into the right cave. And yeah, we're rolling in it. <laughs> so um, I previously had included price balance and other... Um, mods that attempted to you know affect the economy of the game but it's a it's a really tough problem to solve and i've really enjoyed alchemical hustle it it you know puts a curb on abusing potions and alchemy which is like the one thing in morrowind you know you can like just spend an hour in the grazelands and you're set on potions literally for your entire game you'll never need to get potions ever again no joke, but like suddenly with Alchemical Hustle, you can't, you know, I mean, your potions are definitely going to last a lot longer because you're not using them as much, but it kind of makes you think more about getting into a fight because you're not just going to be able to pause the game and spam potions and basically save yourself. Drink two or three potions and you're basically going to drop dead, which if you've never played The Witcher, I've only played Witcher 3, but unless you are investing heavily in your toxicities related abilities... You're going to have a bad time you drink too many potions. And indeed, Geralt will start to look like he's decaying. So yeah, I really appreciated that take on alchemy, and I'm excited. Already have this loaded into my personal setup. I just haven't played with it yet. But this is the kind of thing that will warrant a 6.0, because this is just something... You know, maybe I'll reach out to the author and ask them if they think it's safe but I just have a very strong doubt because it changes so much stuff um, and yeah stuff like this is just very the author is very thoughtful in their design so I digress what the hell was I doing <laughs> oh yeah okay we're figuring out where to where to plug this in and why didn't I have a previously have a plug in we figured out where to put it in As for why I didn't have a plug-in, Todd only knows. Let's go back up here. Bring some order to my staging area here. All right. Oh. Well, that's not what it's called anymore. I don't think. Huh. Yeah, wow, okay. Yet another thing I fixed on my at-home setup. I get the feeling this has likely changed too. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, yeah, and there's, of course, Welcome to the Arena. It's another thing that's not in the to-do list that I wanted to look at. Can we fix the bugs in the BCOM version? 
or somehow like carefully extract them without requiring too much work because that mod is just too cool to not use you know <laughs> Hmm, it seems like there isn't a Skyrim Home of the Nords patch. Okay, well, I guess maybe there need not be. Because Skyrim Home of the Nords doesn't really, you know, step on vanilla content too much. Not that Province Cyrodiil did, but they did place that NPC there on a dock where BCOM Clutter went. I think that's changed now. Okay. to take five soon here. This pot of coffee is running through me. Um, we're just going to call it cephalopod armor patch. And then above it. Chances are I will not deploy the website before the end of the stream because there's some load order changes I really want to check first. Um, you know, just these things I'm putting in here. So yeah, we got two new plugins in there and I want to run it by the MLOX gods real quick <clears throat> for a sanity check. And then I'll probably deploy later today, I don't know, after I get outside and work in the garden some. All right, uh, yeah. So this is all great, except for this doesn't exist yet. Oh. And I'm calling it a cephalopod armor pad. It's going to have a custom folder. City, right? Cities? Cities, towns. Beautiful cities of Marwind. Wow, time is just flying by. Just great. All right. I am so sorry, but I have to take five. I will be right back.
All right, back to it. Sorry about that. Let's see. We'll double, I'll double check that link. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come here, San Tavani. Uh, uh, it looks good. We got this here. Tests are gonna yell at us about not having a folder path. diversity moving a little slower today it doesn't help that I padded the heck out of the to-do list but yeah just moving a little slower today that's fine uh, and I did have a like couple diversions in the beginning too yeah okay so we'll put that one in there right yeah yeah wait hold up hold up first off just to have single atomic changes. I had a note for myself to figure it out. <laughs> We're figuring it out today, folks. <laughs> Step one, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Remove the bunk notes, update the date, fix the path, add the plugin. Added one too many white spaces. And not enough on top. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Looks right. Okay.
be specific and not make people guess. good okay Excuse me. Okay. All right. Now let's add this one, which I did have. I was using this one, I just forgot to put it on the website. about right and there is a plugin that it provides Got him. I'm black coffee guy myself. <clears throat> All right. Also check. Not that though. Hmm. And should this go though? Yeah, 
that should go on all three. Quick overview. <coughs> Excuse me. here. Did I fat finger something? Slow moving today. <laughs> I padded the, went from nine to 23 things that I wanted to do. It's a balance of putting enough things on there. What? Oh. Just bumping into leaks everywhere. All right. It's a balance of having things I want to do pulled up from here super hard man oh i think i'm getting better at it oh oh yeah yeah and i did <laughs> i so i did look into twitch overlays and it looks like there's an open source one that's pretty easy to use it doesn't require like the whole streamlabs thing and it allows for css custom css so in theory i could have the chat overlay on my video have like the you know the open mwe font which i think would be kind of cool <laughs> yeah right um so I don't know. I might mess with that, but it, I did do like five minutes of research and saw that there were some options. Oh, you are killing me. I am killing me. Ah, oh, cool. Gonzo had a setup like that with another game. Yeah, you know, I figured if we're going to do that, like, I certainly know C CSS, so... Typewriter type animation in the chat. Ah, oh, that's awesome. What game was it, if I may ask, Gonzo? Oh, okay. Is that a Noita? I can't my old person eyes can't tell if that's an eye. 
Noida. That's cool. I've never heard of it, honestly. Oh, I've definitely seen this. I mean, it looks pretty awesome. Just at a quick glance. Outstanding and incredible masterpiece of a game, says Gonzo. Wow. Well, it's overwhelmingly pos positive for all time. Sten, you don't play games. Quiet, you. Verified Steam Deck. Ooh. Wow. You played a game once. It was awful. It must have been recently. <laughs> Damn, this looks really, really cool. Okay, I'm going to keep that tab open. A thinking man's action road like. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of um, Dead Cells. I haven't played in a couple years. Had it on the Switch. It was called Fortnite. Get, I'm going to kick you out of here, man. You're banned. I can't believe this. Anyway, back to real discussion. Yeah, I was a big fan of those kinds of games um, when I played them. A few of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh man <clears throat> way off topic here I need a sip of coffee after that one <laughs> oh my god yeah get out of here see like do I really want <laughs> look what you made me do <laughs> do I really want like chat overlay on my video do I really want that I don't know <laughs> maybe I'm sparing people Rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, right? All right. Now that I learned how to do it right. Excuse me. Oh, okay, yeah. Gonzo says, I can share that CSS with you if I can find it. Yeah, go ahead, please do. Um, you know, if I do go that route, which I probably will, if I if I add the text, which I probably will, um, I'll make my CSS, you know, I'll make like a repo for it or something on GitLab, like I'm trying to do with everything to share with people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been lucky, you know, with my machines. I used my idea pad from 2014 until this past December with maybe one reformat in between in 2018, I think, when I got a new hard drive. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to be able to just roll with my setup for many, many years. And there's a certain, you know, nice feeling to that. All right. That looks good. That's what I want to. That's what I want to see. That's no good. That's not what I want to see. So there's a problem. Windows 10. That's all you needed to say, my friend. I mean, no disrespect to Windows or for the folks that use it. You know, I have Windows. I use Windows for my job. You know, it's fine. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it breaks if you just look at it. Well, I'm pretty sure if you just look at it, it will update nowadays. Windows 10 is like, you know, my favorite thing is turning it on and finding out I have to reboot for an update. <laughs> oh, I just turned it on. I wanted, to, of course, I wanted to turn it off and on again, again. Right, I cannot do that on my work machine. When there is an update, I must, my body must be ready, whether it is ready or not. 
All right, so what did I do here? What is going on here? We have a double category situation. Okay. That is from the Gonzo asks, is that from the code you wrote earlier? Yes, it is. And so what we're seeing here is the fallout of me giving special care to Windows and not any other system. I actually made the Linux print out the Windows stuff and then called it a day, but I didn't actually look at Windows or Mac. Whoops. This is why you have tests. If my Selenium tests were still working, I would have wrote a Selenium test to recognize that and at least wouldn't have been able to pick up the Linux error that way. You know, So this is why you have tests, folks. The, the, this, honestly, at this point, should absolutely have a test because it's complicated enough. We have like three or four special paths here, four special paths. So, yeah, it's a boo-boo that I made earlier. Um, and so, easy, thankfully, easy fix by, and this is, again, maybe a bit of a bad thing about my implementation here. But, yeah, I got to, like, repeat the same kind of logic minus this replacement, though. I don't have to do this. And you can see these are all basically the same, too which, you know, I feel like I could have one get modder method that's not a property that can take an argument, maybe. And, and the argument could be like what the user agent says the OS is or something. I don't know. I'm not going to... I could spend more time thinking about it than actually just doing the code the horrible way. It's not, honestly, that horrible either, so I'm just doing it. So, yeah. So if there is, if the clean name has, uh, I need to basically repeat this logic in each one of the get monitors for each OS for each of the conditions. So that hence there's 12 different places where I have this exact same logic, which is a little smelly, if I'm being honest. But what can you do? It's going to work, and I'm never going to look at it again. It'll be 10 years before I care about this code again. So it's a trade-off. Do I want to over-engineer the perfect solution, or do I just want to roll with something that works good for now? and get on with my life. The ladder. I want to do the ladder. But, you know, you want to do the right thing when you can, but also, like, not obsess over it. It's, you know, we're not talking about, like, a religion of perfection here. And definitely perfect is the enemy of good. This is a good, real-life example of perfect is the enemy of good. This is good. It works. Despite all the red squiggly lines, I assure you it's fine. Yeah, just... Why does my linter think that it's not a string when it is? So to be clear, all this red, this stuff right here you see right here, I went into the Python shell. Well, something is legitimately broken. I, anyway, I went into the Python shell and I proved that it is iterable. It is a string. It does all that. My, my editor is just borked. Specifically, the Pyrite LSP stuff. 316. Where am I? What did I do? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Eh. All right. So let's pretend like I'm on a Mac for posterity. Now that I know I borked the Linux one, <laughs> we got to make sure. We got to make sure. Yeah. Also, this formatting always tries to do that. So annoying. Don't indent my stuff, man. Okay, not inside of a 
Not, you know, don't do that. All right. Oh, my God, what did I do? I really, really screwed something here. All right, let's see. The indent was good, and I was just a, I was just a Durban. I didn't eat breakfast today. I woke up late. I didn't eat breakfast. Don't change the indentation. I don't understand why I'm getting two paths here. This is right. This is not right. I clearly screwed something up. This is why it's good to have, you know, this kind of stuff abstracted if we can. I didn't want to think about it too much. Hmm. And so the issue here is one of Borked indentation. And this is one of the reasons why I'm kind of not preferring Python as much these days because these errors, no amount of typing or linting can prevent these kinds of errors really even the best linters are not going to be able to 100% of the time know are you supposed to be indented here or here or here you know they don't they, it isn't going to know or do I want it to be you know I mean okay this is clearly wrong but yeah it's ambiguous when you're depending only on the white space if we had some curly braces in there, all ambiguity would be gone. And I think the curly braces are not really that ugly. All ranting aside, looks how we want it to look. And then let's look at the Linux as a final proof. After, of course, I implement it cor correctly on Linux. <clears throat> Excuse me. Virtually the same. And then... This is what I really ought to do. There we go. We'll commit that apart from this. There we go. Looking good enough. Yeah, all right. Let's put a bow on it, shall we? Getting down to kind of the wire here. Oh man, I really screwed myself with that to-do list today. By convention, get commit messages. The title, which is the top line here, shouldn't be more than 
I guess, 68 characters. That's why it's red. If you're curious and noticing that this is red here, that's why. I don't care that much. I usually just let it be, in particular when it's a, geez, when it's a mod name. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Wow, yeah. So whew, just these two basically took the entire stream because there was a diversion in the beginning where I was looking at some waterworks options on beautiful cities of Morrowind which I think are centered around a Balmora Waterworks mod that I was previously unaware about from the 2022 Modathon. Looks fantastic. Will be another 6.0 edition, probably. Yeah, I put it... <clears throat> excuse me, I put it down here. And we'll put some links for these two. Django's dialogue, I'm not 100% on, honestly. Um, I'm going to have to take a look at that one. These, though, I've never heard of this one, actually, Gonzo. Um, quest, voice, greetings. So that seems pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, there's this Imperial Legion expansion. Hmm. I might try to do this one right now. We got the last 10 or so minutes of the stream. Let's do that one right now. We got the framework. Whoa. <laughs> we got the framework in place to do this one relatively quickly. Uh so let's do so. First things first. Ooh, quest voice greetings is another audiobooks of Morrowind type moment, says Gonzo. That's, I'm interested in this. Very much so. So, okay. That's great. Normally way too late in the day for me to be drinking coffee, but, you know, I got weeds to pull once I depart from y'all. Imperial Legion expansion. All right. Wizard. Just another great one by Alice. Just a quest mod machine over there. And I just enjoy their content a lot. So, respect and thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Staff. Do I not have wizard staff for wizards? This must be another one that I forgot to put on the website. Wizard staff for wizards. Hold up. Well, shucks. This is awkward. <laughs> and this is another one that we definitely want to have, though. I've been playing with it for a while. Um Wizard Staff for Wizards. Let's get a let's get a link for this one. Wizard. Yeah. Yeah, this is the one. Just give some wizards some staves that wizards normally have. A slight consistency type thing. Uh, and I added this a while back. So, hmm. <laughs> wow. See how you get just distracted. I wanted to do the thing, but I couldn't do the thing because I saw the other thing. And yeah, there was, I guess, apparently quite a bit of a drift between my local setup and what I've got on the website. Which is, you know... That's fine. Just gives us more to do. I was starting to think after we like really got a lot done the past couple streams, I'm thinking, man, is there going to be to keep doing it every weekend? But no, we, I'm confident that we have enough to chew on through the end of the year easily. Maybe we can get the issue tracker and GitLab to under 100 by the end of this year. Maybe. That's a goal. Under 100. Okay. So I was trying to decide where this goes and got distracted. Telvani staff or Telvani staff. Yeah, I don't even think I have this one. Stream goals. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'm trying to keep that up. You know, like we got the high level stream goals right here. 
share the process, get feedback, have fun, obviously, but like, you know, get get lab issues under 100. Could be doable within a few months, honestly. Um, but like right now, like that would just please me immensely to do that. So I'm putting that, we're making that a real goal. And and we're highlighting the stream goals too, since it's been a minute. Let's make that big. Yeah, plus four size here. Um, yeah, geez, another one, Telvani staff or Telvani staff. Telvani staff. Yeah, this is another one. Man, lots of drift. Excuse me, between my what I'm playing with here and what I got on the website. Whoops. This one's got to go on there too. This is going to be a six. This is all 6.0. You know, the 5.x release series is going to be focusing on fixing bugs, inconsistencies. I consider additions like these BCOM patches to be worthy content additions because we're mostly adding them to fix the setup, right? This completes the setup as it is in the 5.x series. This is acceptable. Adding the NWAS guide, also acceptable because it's optional and can go in at any time and not break anybody, so I think it's fine. Um, yeah, okay, so we were, we were trying to re-add and by Todd, we will re-add it. Imperial Factions. This is where it fits, right here. And uh, this reminds me too. I read. I need to cha take another look at main quest overlaw overhaul. If I could speak correctly, overly fueled on caffeine. Another one by Alice, though, um, and a highly fascinating premise of basically changing the structure of the main quest. Um, yeah, someday we'll revisit that. Just like that, back in the mix, but we got this fake mod that doesn't exist yet. So we better add it. It's another good one. Gonzo says, I like how it gives the Telvani more to do in the game instead of just being these weird eccentrics you run to. Yeah, yeah, well... Yeah, you get to right away get directed to, you know, go there. Um, which if you're, you know, especially if you're playing like Total Overhaul, you don't simply just walk into Telvas, you know. It's like a tower. You have to figure out somehow how to get up there. We don't have a climbing mod yet either, so you can't just be like a, you know, really buff warrior or something. Um, it's a great idea. It's a totally great idea. And I, that's, you know, multiple paths through the story is like an untapped frontier, even though, even though Alice has tapped it, it's untapped. I think other, you know, I think we can expand it even. So, um, yeah, yeah. The combination with Rise of House, House Telvani and the Grey's Lance changes, it adds so much. It does. It makes that whole region just like beautiful. And I want to spend a lot of time there. Um, and then, of course, you know, the OAAB changes to tell the, uh, to to Voss. Just so much good stuff there. Getting off the deep end here. We're going to do this before I say farewell to the stream today. 1301. Uh... Oh my, alt tab failing. 
This is how you can tell. My brain is running out of juice. Okay. And this one gives us a plugin, which will be, not counting the change log, the final change we need. Let's just verify. the one. Oh, that's obviously not what I want. I done goofed here too. All right. <clears throat> so I think that's going to wrap it up today. A depressingly unchecked list here. Uh, truthfully, <clears throat> yesterday I basically had a very last minute, you know, let's get the list ready. So I didn't have a chance really to throw a lot of stuff in there. Um, hence the kind of this little check that took most of the stream today of course I spent last night and this morning kind of padding the list went a little bit overboard some of this is going to have to I did actually look into that by the way there were no Google requests being made by Font Awesome so I'm really hopefully Kagan will join again someday and clarify about that um, but yeah a lot of this stuff I just couldn't get to today um, somebody asked about that on Discord which makes me think maybe I don't mention it enough clearly enough um, hey cool didn't get to that or that, or any of this, really. Um, oh, yeah, well, okay, so we'll do one more thing while I'm waiting for the test to crunch. Um, I can, for the benefit of people watching, I can sort of explain my, so I have I have an unusual workflow for modders. And maybe you're aware, I use, I use GitLab um, to host my stuff. I also do put it on Nexus Mods. This isn't on there yet. You can see the little to-do on the bottom there, but it's going, once I release it, which I'm about to do right now. I will upload it to Nexus. But the reason why I do it on GitLab is not just because this is basically a pattern that is, you know, what I do professionally, which it is. Um, this is what we call CICD. They got a little CICD thing here. This is just what they in the industry call CICD. But the idea is basically when I save a, a commit to the repo, a workflow happens that will automatically publish a dev build. And if I push a tag, which is how I indicate a release, a git tag will actually publish a release package, which will end up right here. 
there's no release here, so it's a bad example, but it'll end up here. And you, the users, can then find it on the homepage. And I don't do jack squat. I just push a git tag, the CI robots publish it, and make it available through this button, which there's no release yet. We're going to do that now. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a, a unusual workflow for modders. Um, it's sort of a mi you know a weird mixing of my CI CD kind of patterns that I've just done for work for so many years, and my modding hobby. So let's kind of see that in action here. So first off, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to do a git tag here in my editor, and then we're going to see a pipeline come up here in my browser. So first things first. Let's go ahead, do a tag here. Um, on the right-hand panel here is my git client. I don't really use command line git a whole lot. Sometimes I do when I'm tagging a release. I don't, you know, I stick here living in Emacs. So we'll give it the 1.0 name, put it on the master branch, and there you go. I got a tag, but I didn't push it yet. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, capital P, and then a little t. And then we got in there in the corner, you can see it push tags. Let's go back to the pipelines, refresh the page, and we can see, boom, my tag has been received by GitLab. The CI robots are doing their thing. We're building the mod, it's done. We're about to take the thing we just built put it into the package repository that we just looked at. Boom, it's done. Let's look over here. We got a package. Let's refresh this page. Latest version 1.0, let's click download. And you can see right here, total overhaul patches. Version 1.0. And this is the automated workflow that I kind of that I rock and so every git commit will produce a new dev build every git tag push will produce a new official release that is automatically uploaded here Gonzo says that's a speedy workflow yeah that's the idea professional software developers do things like this you know um, when you're writing code professionally you want to be able to iterate and deliver as fast as possible and um, and again you know that's what I do professionally um, for my day job and it's kind of a neat practice to be able to apply this to my hobby and modding, you know. And so um, without getting too far off the deep end, I did create this OpenMW mod template repository with the intention of basically giving people an easy way to opt into this workflow. And have basically everything set up out of the box. The kind of a website like this, CI/CD configuration, you know, all of that just out of the box, and um, and a fork tool shell script that basically changes everything for you. Um, there is a GitLab feature of repository templates that is probably actually a better tool for this that I learned about after I started making this. But someday I would like to revisit this. Maybe dedicate a stream to like, hey, let's uh. <clears throat> Let's use the mod template to build a GitLab hosted mod, you know, and just and just make it from the template and have everything, a website, CI, CD configuration, everything just out of the box. So, you know, c compare that to if you've ever uploaded anything to Nexus mods, and I'm not trashing on Nexus. Nexus, I love the website, but um, their user experience is much different. You got to log in. You got a nine page form or something like that you don't have to do all the pages but uploading a file has like many pages to it i don't know if there's like a developer api where i could just automatically do things but like it's pretty nice right like to just type a couple of keys and have it update i could go make a sandwich and you know my release is published there's something to that in my opinion so um yeah okay well while i was rambling on about this stuff our website is no doubt, our local copy of the website is no doubt crunch. So let's take a really a final look at that. I'm not going to deploy today just because quite a few load order changes here. And I just want to make sure everything is, you know, good using M locks, but I really need to eat for, otherwise I would just keep the stream going, but I really need to eat. I'm getting a little hangry. Um, maybe I'll kick the stream on later again, but, uh, Release 5.3 almost certainly going to be the last in the 5.x series and 6.0 coming with some like pretty major additions. Just when you think, you know, we got like total overhaul here. Let's take a look. You think it's like 400 some odd mods. How many more 
I'm not saying this is like the biggest mod collection you could possibly have, but like a fairly curated list, 460 mods seems like a lot. You know, we'll be pushing 500 mods soon. That's a fact. So. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much, as usual. It's a pleasure being here. And I will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>